Okay, hey class, I wanted to uh, demonstrate how to make a histogram pretty quickly out of this data analysis add-in. So here's some of our M&M data. Let's do a histogram of this. Uh, this is for peanut M&M for this variable called, um, how much does your M&M bag weigh in grams? So we go into data, data analysis, uh, and then go find histogram. So remember, if you don't have this data analysis the guy over here, if it's not showing up, you gotta go into file, options, add-ins, manage Excel add-ins, click on go. Make sure the thing is checked that says analysis tool pack. Click on okay, that's it, then it should show up. All right, so data analysis, find the thing that says histogram, and we get a little window pop up. In the window here, we have uh, essentially two things. Down here, this is just like always, it's where are we gonna put it, where, where do you want the output? We'll just make it a new worksheet. Uh, but the two things, this is we want an input range and a bin range. If we leave this bin range thing empty, which we, we will likely do for most of our class, uh, then it will create new, uh, it, the bins by itself. Remember, histogram takes some kind of, some sort of continuous data and chunks it into uh, little bins and discretizes it into bins and then counts how many times uh, it sees something in each of these bins. Sometimes it makes sense to make your own bins, but we won't do that this time in this video. So we're just going to leave that blank. So input range, then we go over here and just uh, select on that uh, little guy and then select some data, including a label if you'd like. So I'd like, so control shift down. I can hit enter, it takes me back to my uh, my little window here. M I included the label, so make sure you click uh, check labels. Uh, and then we want chart output down here. That's it, the rest of these guys. The rest of these guys we don't need to do. Uh, and click on okay. All right, so there we go. So then the fixes that I make, uh, to make this look a little bit more like a histogram, first of all, I kind of get rid of this little frequency thing. Uh, and then, uh, remember, th this axis down here is actually a continuous axis, right? This is a continuous variable. In this case, it was a uh, weight of an M&M &M bag. Um, but for whatever reason, Excel um, puts gaps in between each of these bars, which is not really what we want. So we can get rid of those gaps by click clicking in, in, the, uh, in the graph itself on one of the bars, right click and say form, uh, yeah, format data series. There we go. Uh, and then we see this thing gap width. So just get rid of the gap width. Uh, sometimes I like to keep just a little teeny bit so that you can still see a little bit difference between each of those. So that looks better. That's it. Um, a few more fixes. So remember, uh, this happens for all the charts and graphs in Excel. Any of these numbers, anything over here is actually connected to something else. It's connected to some data. It's actually connected to this data over here. Uh, and so if I want to, there's way too many decimal places here, in my opinion. So I can highlight these things over here, go into home, and then say, let's make these decimal places smaller. Maybe like one decimal place out or something like that. Well, that's way prettier. The final thing that uh, I generally do is, remember this very first bin that Excel makes will always have a frequency of one, which doesn't really help that much. And in fact, in this case, the next one was zero. So we could actually add you know, those first two up and put it into the third one, and then that would be okay. So let's do that. So let's just make that to be, this third one to be two. And this is great. So if I hit two, watch the third one. Third one is this one right here. So watch that, I'm gonna hit two, and then hit enter. Oh, you see that it popped up, Bonk. It's connected to this data, right? So when I hit two, it just jumped up like that. And I'm gonna delete the first two. The, re the reason I can delete those first two is because remember the very first bin, the interpretation of the first bin is anything that's smaller than that, uh, how, count how many things that are smaller than that. Well, I can still say that f there's now two that are smaller than 46.2, because there was one over here. Well, I'm just gonna delete that, so right click, Delete. As I do that, that updates my chart too. All right. So a few other things. Uh, you know, you you should probably not label these bins. You should label these whatever the actual label is, like whatever the measurement is. All right. So in this case, it was weight of M and M bags. Uh, and then histogram is not a good enough title. It needs to say something like histogram of M and M bags. Uh, M and M bag weights right frequency over here that's probably appropriate uh, and that, that looks like a pretty good histogram actually that's what a histogram should look like uh, and then we can sort of see that there is a little bit of uh, symmetry going on here it looks like if we had probably if we got more and more data we would probably see that there is, it probably ends up becoming kind of a normal distribution uh, hovered around the mean which is right around here all right so that's it for how to make a histogram pretty simple and easy all right